As per Companies Act 2013, which of the following statements is false in respect of a small company? Paid up capital is less than rupees 50 lakhs. B. Public company can be a small company. C. Turnover is less than rupees 2 crores. Small company is not required to prepare cash flow statement as part of financial statements. So, which statement is false in respect of a small company? Small company can have paid up capital of less than 50 lakhs. Public company cannot be a small company. Turnover less than 2 crores. Small company has to prepare. Small company is not required to prepare cash flow statement as part of the financial statements. So, B is false. Public company can be a small company that is false. HDC Limited issued 10,012% debentures of 100 each at Rs. 94 on 1st January 2010. Under the terms of issue, one-fifth of the debentures are redeemed annually. First redemption on 31-12-2010. Calculate the discount to be written off in 2013. A. 8,000, B. 16,000, C. 20,000 and D. 12,000. The amount of discount involved is Rs. 6.60,000. Under the terms of issue, one-fifth of the debentures are redeemed annually. 1st January 2010, 11, first was on 31, 12, 2010, then 12, 10, 11, 12. So the fourth year, this discount of 60,000. is written off, one-fifth of the debentures are redeemed annually. If we take, we have debentures of 10,000 or 10 lakhs debentures is redeemed annually. So the amount outstanding each year is 10 lakh, 8 lakh, 6 lakh, 4 lakh and 2 lakh. Discount of 60,000 has to be apportioned in the ratio of 10 is to 8 is to 6 is to 4 is to 2. Or 5 is to 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. Therefore, the amount of discount in the fourth year on in 2013 will be 2 divided by 15. That is 5 plus 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 2 by 15 of 60,000 that is equal to 8,000. Correct answer should be A, 8,000. Which of the following statements is false? A, loss on reissue should not exceed the amount forfeited. B, when shares are reissued at a loss, such loss is debited to forfeited shares account. C, if loss on reissue is less than the amount forfeited, the surplus amount should be transferred to capital reserve. If the reissued amount and forfeited amount exceeds the face value of shares reissued, the excess amount is always credited to shares forfeited account. Which of the following statements is false? Loss on reissue should not exceed is a true statement. When shares are reissued at a loss, such loss is debited to shares. That's also true. If loss on reissue is less than the amount forfeited, the surplus is taken to capital reserve is also true. So the false statement is, if the reissued amount and the forfeited amount exceeds the face value of the shares reissued, the excess amount is always credited to shares forfeited. No, <coughs> this is not true. <coughs> what happens if the reissued amount, the forfeited amount, whatever profit is made after reissue, that is transferred to capital reserve. After reissue, amount is not retained in a shares forfeited account. So the correct answer is option D. The subscribed capital of X Limited is 90 lakh divided into shares of rupees 100 each. There were no calls in areas till the final call was made. The final call was paid on 85,000 shares. The calls in areas was 1,25,000. The final call money per share is 
A25, B20, C75, D125. Subscribe share capital is 90 lakh shares of rupees 100 each. 100 each. So we have totally 90,000 shares. Final call is paid in 85,000 shares. So there are 5,000 shares in areas. The calls in areas are 1 lakh 25,000 divided by 5,000. We get rupees 25 per share. Correct answer should be A. 25. Use the following information for questions. Consider the following data pertaining to MS Limited as on 31st March 2015. Issued subscribe called up 20,000 shares of 100 each, 20 lakh. Calls in area 10,000. Profit and loss account credit 67,000. Profit for the year 196,110. The company wants to create a redemption, debenture redemption reserve and to transfer 50,000 every year out of profits to redeem the debentures. The company declared a dividend of 10%. The balance of surplus after effecting the above transactions is A6000, B68100, C8610 and D6810. Profit and loss account, there was a balance of 67,000. Profit for the year is 1,90,610. The company wants to create a debenture redemption reserve and to transfer 50,000 every year out of the profits to redeem the debentures. Dividend of 10% has been declared. 10% <coughs> dividend on 20 lakh minus 10,000. That is 19,90,000 into 10% will give us 1,99,000. 1,99,000. So this is also an balance would therefore be 20,19,90,000, So we had a balance of 67,000. Plus, created a profit of 1,96,10 minus 50,000 being transferred to the debenture redemption reserve minus 1,99,000 dividend paid should be 8,610. Correct answer should be C, 8,610. On 1,4,2005, 5% cumulative preference share capital is rupees 2 lakh. Equity share capital is 5 lakh. During the years 2004, 5 and 5, 6, the dividend declarations totaled 8,000 and 16,000 respectively. What is the amount of dividend paid to equity shareholders for the year 2005, 2006? A, 4,000, B, 5,000, C, 10,000 and D, 12,000. Now, what is the preference dividend? Preference dividend is 5% of 2 lakhs 10,000. Equity share capital is 5 lakh. During the years 2004 and 2005, the dividend declarations totaled 8,000 and 16,000. What is the amount of dividend paid to the equity shareholders for the year 2000? Five and two thousand six. <clears throat> Since preference dividend is ten thousand during the years, the dividend declarations totaled the amount of Dividend paid to equity shareholders for 2005 and 2006. Totally paid was 16,000. 10,000 is preference dividend. For 2004 and 2005, 8,000 dividend only was paid. The entire amount must have been paid to the preference shareholders. So there is an accumulation in 2005 and 6. Dividend of 2,000 to preference shareholders, arrear of dividend for the previous year. 
Then there is another 10,000 for the current year, preference dividend. This is area preference dividend, 10,000 current year dividend, preference dividend, 10,000. That is 12,000. Total dividend paid is 16,000. Therefore, 16,000 minus 12,000, 4,000 must be the amount of dividend received by equity shareholders. These are cumulative preference shares. If dividend is not paid in a particular year, it is accumulated and paid subsequently. So, correct answer should be A, 4,000. Premium on redemption of debentures is dash account. A, personal, B, nominal, C, real and D, none of the above. Premium on redemption of debentures has to be paid to the debenture holders and it is therefore a personal account. A. Personal. Unless otherwise stated, preference shares are always deemed to be A. Cumulative participating and convertible B. Cumulative non-participating non-convertible C. Non-cumulative participating non-convertible D. Non-cumulative non-participating and convertible Unless otherwise stated, preference shareholders are cumulative, they are non-participative and they are non-convertible. Correct option should be B. When the debentures are issued as collateral security for a loan, then such debenture holders are entitled to A. Interest on the amount of loan B. Interest on the amount of debenture C. No interest amount D. Either interest on the amount of loan or interest on the amount of debenture. Collateral security is just additional security. <clears throat> no interest is payable until there is some default on the loan. So when debentures are issued as collateral security for a loan, debenture holders are entitled to only the interest on the amount of loan. Correct answer, option A, interest on loan.